Thank you, Victoria. Friends, we want to begin, as always, with a few announcements, so I call your attention to the screen that's behind me on the wall. We'll look at some announcements here together, things that are coming up. First of all, um, the Super Bowl of Caring. The youth will be collecting non-perishable food items on February 11th. There's a lot happening on February 11th. We're going to get to all that. So if you want to bring food items, non-perishable items to church that day, it's going to go to the backpack mission or to the food pantry. Third grade Bibles, we have, um, we give their Bibles to third graders every year. So if we need to get names and birthdays, though, because they do special things with those for the kids that personalize them. So if you want to turn a name in or a birthday to the name and birthday, both to the office, please, please let us know. And if there's a fourth grader that didn't get a Bible last year or something like that, we want to make sure we include them as well. So um, next Sunday is Scout Sunday. The Scouts will be leading the service, and there's men who cook afterward. That is their big fundraiser of the year. There are various men to come in and cook different things for us. You get to sample them and judge them and everything like that. And Ruth will have tickets for that after the worship service today. If you want to get a ticket, you get them next Sunday still as well. Men Who Cook is on February 4th. So Girl Scouts are Girl Scouts supposed to be here to sell cookies after church today. Um, Heifer Project, if you have donations out still for those, we need you to turn those in. Pickleball is starting up. There is going to be a youth league that's starting up with elementary, middle school, and high school. Information about that is on the website as well. There's also Monday night for anyone that can come for open gym for pickleball. Um, if you would like to go to ASP or you'd like information about ASP or the fundraising that we're doing, there's information there to sign up, youth ministry at howlandumc.com. We're hosting another basketball tournament that was really successful yesterday. They're going to do another one on February 3rd. That's for also for ASP, and so we need uh, volunteers for that. If you can, Sleep in Heavenly Peace is delivering today. They're delivering beds after church. They're going to be doing a fundraiser later on in April. We'll give you more information on that later. Soccer will be starting up, and they still need some people to help ref soccer if you're interested in that. Those games are on Saturdays beginning in February. And then uh, we finally we have our Lent and Ladle Fest. There is a flyer about it in your bulletin today. They're doing a special thing after church. We're going to try to kick off Lent with a special thing for families, things that you can take home and do during the season of Lent as like a devotion during those 40 days, um, activities and things that you could do as well. And then um, after that, they're having a uh, chili and soup cook-off. We didn't do this for a few years when COVID was happening, and then um, Relay for Life wasn't as strong in this area. So we're transitioning from Relay for Life to ASP. Again, ASP, we send a team of about 40 youth and adults every year to Appalachia to rebuild homes for people in need. It costs a lot of money to go, so we do things to raise money for that throughout the year. So if you would like to cons uh, consider entering a soup or a chili or something like that in that cook-off, they're going to be doing that after church that day. So um, please plan to stay for that. It's only $5, too, to have all the soup and chili you can eat and everything. If you're not going to submit something, stay and help us eat and judge it and everything and help us raise money for ASP. And that information is on a flyer in your bulletin there as well. Any other uh, Christian, for the, for the Christian preschool, enrollment is opening it up. It already has for church members. It's about to open up for past and present preschool families and then, again, for the public. So if you, anyone would like to, you know someone interested in the church preschool, uh, please let Carrie know or the church office. All right, friends, if there are no other announcements, we're going to get started with our time of worship together. Would you please stand, give someone a handshake or a hug. Welcome to the house of the Lord today, please. Friends, I invite you to remain standing, please, if you're able, as you return to your places. Please remain standing as you return to your places in our opening song together. From the ground, is going to lead us in as I am free.
Would you pray with me, please, friends? Lord God, we just give you thanks that we are free, that we have the freedom to gather here in this place. Thanks to those who have sacrificed so much so that we can be free and that we're free from sin, Lord. We're free from everything in this life that overwhelms because you've set us free from sin, from even death itself for those who have gone before us. So, Lord, we just give you our thanks. We give you our praise as we gather here to worship you this morning. Not only that we are free, but for how blessed we are with so many blessings in our lives. Help us be grateful for those blessings and be a blessing to others as we spread your love when we leave this place today. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Friends, you may be seated.
Oh, man, I'd like the ch kids to come to write for the children's time, please. Be more enthusiastic than the adults. You ready? Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I don't know. That felt pretty weak to me today. Felt pretty weak. Let's try it again. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Welcome to the house of the Lord today, friends. So I am building on last week's time. If you were here with me last week, I showed you how I absolutely cannot juggle. Okay. The other thing that I can do is I'm getting older and my back is getting worse. I'm having a hard time carrying heavy things. So Parker, since you've got a Batman shirt on, would you come up and help me this morning? since you're a superhero today. So, um, Park, what I'm gonna have you do is stand up for me, buddy. Face the people out there, and I'm gonna put this backpack on for you, okay? <laughs> How's it feel, buddy? Is it light or heavy? Oh, heavy. <laughs> you know why? Because I took, I've got a shelf at home with children's Bibles on it, my kids have read through the years, and I put them all in a bag and brought him along with me this morning. So Parker, how would you like to carry this around all day for me today? No. <laughs> no, because it's heavy, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, take it off, buddy. I know it is heavy. All right, you're strong. Thank you so much for helping me out, Batman. Okay, so this is heavy, okay? <laughs> well, I really wiped you out, Parker, I'm sorry. I'll show you in a second, okay? So um, sometimes we go through times in life that are hard, and the Bible says it's kind of like a heavy load that we have to carry, okay? Sometimes it means it was sad times or hard times, it makes our hearts feel heavy and sad. So what I've got in here is a bunch of children's Bibles, but if I were to carry this around all day, even though I'm, I'm a little stronger than Parker, not much anymore, but I'm a little stronger than him still, okay? So if I were to carry this around, though, it's pretty heavy, okay? But if I were to take one of these out and hand that to you to hold for me, and if I gave you this to hold for me, and if I gave you this to hold for me, right, and I gave you this to hold for me, you want to hold one, buddy? And I gave you that to hold for me, all right, and I gave you this to hold for me, and I gave you this to hold for me, and I gave you this to hold for me. These are all just children's Bibles I had at home on the shelf, okay? And I gave this to hold for me, okay? Now, now it's empty, okay? But the idea is that if I took the burden that I had when my heart was heavy and I shared it with other people and other people helped me, that I could make it through hard times a lot better that way. We kind of talked about this a little week, last week too. What we want, okay, is what everyone goes through sad times or hard times. We don't want to try to do those things all by ourselves. When we have sad days or hard times, when we grow up, I want you to know this, and I want you to know it deep in your hearts. God loves you, and God is always with you. And not only that, there are people in your life who will always love you and help you, okay? We are never alone. We're never alone. God is always with us, and God's always in our hearts, and there are always people who love us. You have moms, dads, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and everyone turn around and look at all the people out there who are sitting out there in the pews. Believe it or not, even if you don't know them really well, they would love you and try to help you, okay? Because we're all brothers and sisters. We're all God's children, all right? We're meant to love each other and help each other, okay? So it's a lot easier to go through life when I'm not trying to do all the sad times and hard times by myself. And it's, easy, it's easier for other people when we help them. Elizabeth said this a while ago when she was preaching, but the senior quote that I had in my yearbook, okay, is the only way to have a friend is to be one. That was my quote in my yearbook. Some of you know what that means. It means that I think that we need to be a friend to other people if we want them to be friends to us. We need to help them if we want them to help us. So don't be afraid to help other people and to get help when we need it too. We all have times when we need help. It's okay to ask for help, and it's great to give other people help too, okay? Let's say a little prayer together, everybody. These are all just children's Bibles off my shelf at home. I'm glad you find them interesting. Let's pray together real quick. Dear God, thank you so much for all the blessings that you give to us. Help us to remember when we have sad times, and everyone has sad times, 
that you are with us and other people who love us will help us through those times too. And then help us to help other people who need our help and love too. Help us to be a friend so we can have friends. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, thanks everybody. I'll take your book back. You can put it back in this backpack for me even and head back to Children's Church. Thank you so much. Friends, as the kids head out to Children's Church this morning, we do take time in our service every week to make sure that we share our joys and concerns with one another because we are a church family. And um, we are there to pray for one another and help one another to lend a hand if we can for those who need help. So we are going to take a moment to share joys and concerns with one another. If you have something to share, please raise a hand and an usher will bring a microphone to you. Just a second, Linda Bruce is coming to you. Um, I would like to ask for prayers for my son's fraternity brother and good friend. He's been battling um, pancreatic cancer for the last couple years. And just in the last week or two, things have gotten bad. And it's in his lungs and he's lost weight and can't do the things that he had kept doing. What's his name, Linda? Jerry Fork. Please keep Jerry in your prayers. He's, he's known by Pappy because he had been in the military and came back to college and joined the fraternity. So he was several years older than the rest of them, and they referred to him as Pappy. So... Okay, so whether you think of it as Pappy Jerry or Pappy or Jerry, please keep him in your prayers. Over here on the side, please. Betty? Well, I have a a joy. Uh, um, My dad turned 89 yesterday, and the person that spoke before me I feel for you because I lost my my uncle Ronnie to that same nasty cancer you're talking about. So happy birthday to Eddie's father. Go ahead, Kelly. Bruce, all the way on this side, then, while she's talking. Good morning. Um, I would like to ask continued prayers for my grandfather, Ted Ray. He's been on our prayer concern list for quite a while, but um, this past week he's been in the hospital with um, continued nosebleeds due to his blood being too thin because of his blood thinner that he's on, Um, and he's very weak. Um, They did put a mesh in that they're hoping is going to help, but um, there's been several that he's had that they haven't been able to stop, so he was actually admitted into the hospital, so prayers for Ted Ray. Please keep Ted in your prayers. There are a number in our church family were added to the prayer concern list in your bulletin recently, so to call your attention to Gerald Eddy, who needs our prayers, uh, Gail Morris, because Jim Gardner just passed away, which had his service, George Kepner just passed away, so please keep Kathy and the family in your, praise, in your prayers, Susie Ross just lost her mother, so her family, and then longtime member Les Heilman, um, he and June haven't been well to be here in church recently, but Les would just move from the hospital uh, to Lake Vista in Cortland for rehab. So please continue to keep Les in your prayers. He had both a stroke and a heart attack and is, uh, n- has not been doing well. Bob? I would like prayers for my very close friend in Denver, Jeff Bar Hoover, who's also Rob's godfather. He was diagnosed some time ago with various heart conditions, congestive heart failure being one of them, and he is seriously dealing with it with all the things he needs to do and changing his lifestyle. But I'd like prayers for Jeff Bar Hoover. Thank you. Please pray for Jeff also. Other others this morning. 
Um, one of Samuel's fraternity brothers, um, his father was diagnosed with cancer, I don't know, maybe a month or two ago, and um, it was not a good prognosis, and he has just had a couple of rounds of chemo, and they've declared him cancer-free. So um, I don't even know the kid's name, but just a joy. So the young man's name was Tyler. I'm not sure what his... Kyler, sorry, and I'm not sure what the father's name was, but he was supposed to have been actually gone by Christmas. It was so bad, and now they declared him cancer-free, so praise God for that. All right, friends, if there are no others, we're going to join together in our prayer hymn this morning as we prepare our hearts for prayer today, and as a song, a hymn that talks about what I've just been talking about with the kids this morning, how we're meant to carry each other's burdens, which is what our message will be about today as well. This is an old hymn called Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Let's join together, please. Friends, would you please join with me for a moment of silent prayer as we come to our God together in prayer today. Lord God, we gather in part in this place every week to praise you, to lift your name on high to worship you, to be in your presence. And Lord, we worship you and thank you for all the blessings that you give to us every day. But we know, Lord, that we don't only have blessings in this life, that we have burdens, concerns, struggles sometimes as well. We or our loved ones, the people that we know and care about, we all face these times in life, Lord. But we give you thanks that we know that we can come to you and lift up these burdens to you, lift up these hard times to you, and know that you are God, that you created us, that you love us in ways that go beyond our understanding, and you are greater than anything that we face, any struggle that we go through, and that one of the greatest blessings you've given us in this life is people who love us and care about us and are there for us to lend their strength to us when we need it or when our loved ones need it. And so this morning, Lord, we pray for people that we've mentioned today. We pray for Jerry. We pray for Ted, for Jeff, for Gerald Eddy, for Gail and the Gardner family, the Kepner family, the Ross family, for Les Heilman, for all those on our prayer request list, Lord, and for those whom we name in our hearts before you. Whether they need the healing touch, of our Heavenly Father, where they need the strength and comfort of your Holy Spirit. We pray you be with each person in a strong and mighty way and let, you f let them feel your presence in their lives. But Lord God, we pray also for ourselves because we know, Lord, that there's this tie that binds us together. And when others are struggling and we know they're going through a hard time, 
Lord, fill us with compassion. Fill us with your spirit so that it overflows from us into their lives. Help us to be somehow a source of strength to them, to give them hope, to give them reassurance that they're not alone. For one of the hardest things that we face when we go through hard times is this feeling that life is overwhelming us and we're alone, almost on an island sometimes. People don't know where to turn and they isolate themselves and pull away from others. But Lord, help us to be people who reach out to others, who reach out with your love, who let people know they are never alone. They never face life's burdens or struggles alone. Not only that there's a God who made them and loved them, but that we love them also. Make it evident in our lives with the way that we live in love, with the way your love shines through us, your light shines through us for others to see. Because we know, Lord, that inside these walls and outside these walls, good people, bad people, who knows, Lord, all people face struggles, trials, hard times. I tried to explain it to the kids with a backpack, but we understand as adults, Lord, we face hard times and struggles and trials. Help us, Lord, to know when we go through those times that there are people who will love us, people who will help us. Help us not to be afraid to ask for help for others to lend us their wisdom or strength or give us hope again. And help us to believe always in you and in your word which promises that nothing can separate us from your love no matter what we face in this life. So Lord God, we pray for all those who are hurting in some way in this world. Take us and use us to help them. When we go through those times ourselves, Lord, help us to be willing to help others, to receive the help for ourselves when we need it as well. We pray all these things this morning in the name of Christ Jesus, your Son, our Lord and Savior, the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our Lord Jesus said that where your treasure is, that your heart will be also. We will worship God at this time, the offering of our hearts and our treasures.
Would you pray with me, please? Lord God, with grateful hearts for all the blessings you've given us, we present this offering to you this morning because we know that somewhere in this world is someone that needs to be touched by your love, to feel your presence in their life somehow and know that you and your love are real. So take what we give this morning, Lord, and use it to touch their lives in your name. And in your name we pray. Amen. Friends, you may be seated. So uh, From the Ground has come up and going to play another song for us to lead us into our message today. And this song is called Brother. It builds upon what I've been uh, praying about so far in the children's sermon and everything, the theme that we're trying to build today. So um, they've sung this song before, so you might know it well enough to sing along. If not, just uh, try and listen to the words. The words will be on the screen as well. You can follow along. But these words speak to what I'm trying to uh, speak about today. So listen and read along as uh, they perform for us, Brother. Doesn't now there's a cage locked around my heart. Found a way to drop the keys where my failures were. Now my hands can't reach that far. I am made for rivalry. I can never take the world alone. Knowing in my weakness I'm strong, but it's your love that brings me home. Brother, let me be your shelter. Never leave you all alone. When you're low Brother, let me be your fortress When the night winds are driving on Be the one that lights the way Free it all When you call and need me near Saying where'd you go Brother, I'm right here You're the blood of my blood We can get through it all Brother, let me be your shelter Never leave you all alone I can be the one you call When you're low Brother, let me be your fortress I went to driving home. Be the one that liked the way. Bring it on. Brother, let me be your shelter. Never leave you all alone. I can be the one you call when you're low. Brother, let me be your fortress when the night winds are driving home. Be the one that liked the way.
As from the ground, he returns to their seats. Let me say that um, I always spend a lot of time debating what the last song is going to be because I really want it to reflect the theme. And there's two really that really reflected the theme especially. And that's one of them because the idea of that song, I'll be your shelter, I I'm going to help you, I'll be there for you. Um, the idea of that song, it's not just that God will be, we will be there for each other as well, is the uh, message that I wanted to be able to convey to you today, and that's clear in that song. That's why I had them sing that song for you today. Friends, as we begin our message today, would you please take a moment to pray with me and for me. Oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Right now, in our congregation, and this happens all the time, it's typical of any year, there are multiple couples that I know of going through a divorce. There are many people who are struggling in their lives in some way for direction with a job or something else in their life. There are many people, I just mentioned some this morning, who have lost loved ones recently. And there are people who have health problems and loved ones who have health problems. And I've been, this is my 30th year in ministry. There's never been a year where that doesn't happen. It happens to all of us all the time. There's a phrase I hear used pretty often when someone is hurting, a phrase a friend tries to use to comfort someone who is struggling. And it's a phrase that I don't agree with at all. And it's this, God doesn't give you more than you can handle. Have you heard that before? Probably you have, because I've heard it said many times. Many times someone's been in my office saying, I know that God doesn't give me more than I can handle, but I don't know how to handle this. Well, I don't agree with that old wisdom or that old saying at all. First of all, even though you hear it a lot, it's not something that's found in the Bible. The closest idea is probably 1 Corinthians 10, 13. So I'm going to have Brandon pull this verse up for you. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. You face what everyone else faces when it comes to temptation. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you're tempted, he will also provide a way out so you can stand up under it. So you see, the Bible does say that you won't be tempted beyond what you can bear or what you can resist with God's help. And that God will always help us avoid making the wrong choice when we face temptation. So when it comes to temptation, I guess you could say the Bible does say God doesn't give you more than you can handle. But there isn't a verse in the Bible that says when it comes to suffering or grief or difficulties in life that God doesn't give us more than we can handle. The Bible doesn't say it. And I don't believe it. And there are three reasons I don't give this advice. First, it makes out God to be a bad guy. As if God was some bad guy passing out punishment or suffering to people. You know, like God is, you know, Oprah on that old show where she's episode, she's passing out cars. You get a car and you get a car. Like God is up in heaven saying, you get cancer and you get pancreatic cancer and, and you get heart disease or something God doesn't work that way. God doesn't hand out punishment to people. Jesus is very clear on that. I don't think God's randomly pulling names out of a hat or something and giving people illnesses or struggles. We know that God created a world for whatever reason where, il where illnesses exist. We know that the Bible says the rain falls on the just and the unjust, that everyone faces hard times in life. Second, when we tell someone God doesn't give them more than they could handle, it can actually make that person feel as if they are weak, as if we are somehow saying to them, look, God doesn't give you more than you can handle, so you personally, you must not be strong enough because if God doesn't give you more than you can handle and you're breaking down like this and not handling it, then you need to pull yourself together and get through this. And I've said before, many times over the years, people have come to me and said, Pastor Matt, I know that God doesn't give me more than I can handle, but I don't know how to handle this. And the third reason I don't tell people this is because they're not weak when they say that, that they don't know how to handle this, that they're overwhelmed. They're not weak, and it's wrong to make them feel weak, and it's not what the Bible says. In fact, not only is there, isn't there a verse in the Bible that says this, 
but I can show you places where the Bible seems to say the opposite. Let's look at a few verses together from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 through 11. This is Paul writing. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about the hardships we suffered in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired even of life. Indeed, in our hearts we felt the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us on him, we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us as you help us by your prayers. Then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. See, Paul is basically saying here that they had more than they could handle. They were afraid, in fact, that they were going to die. And he says, we knew we couldn't do it on our own. We couldn't rely on ourselves. And so... We had to rely upon God and the prayers of others and the help of others. And that's how they made it through. And they knew that would be a testimony then to others that God had helped them and would help them too. And that is what I think is true. That is what I think is biblical. Not that we don't sometimes have more than we can handle. It's that we never face more than God can handle. And that is a crucial difference, friends. Sometimes you will have more than you can handle. But you will never face more than God can handle. That's all the difference in the world, understanding that. You'll never face more than God can handle. Jesus never says in his word, follow me and everything will be sunshine and roses. Point that verse out to me. It's not there. Follow me and your life will never have problems. Follow me and your life will be easy. It doesn't say that in, at all. In fact, not only Jesus, but the Bible as a whole certainly never says that. The Bible never says you'll never face illness, you or your loved ones. You'll never grieve. You'll never be depressed. You'll never face pain or difficulty or hard choices in life. The Bible says we will face those things that all people do that rain again falls on the just and the unjust doesn't matter if you're a good person or a bad person things like this happen in life we all have to deal with them but what the word of God promises us again and again and again is when it happens we are never alone and we can never be separated from God's love we're going to read a few verses together from one of my very favorite chapters in the whole Bible Romans chapter 8 which is promised to us again and again, let's look at these words together. And we know that in all things, no matter what we face, in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Nothing that we face in life, right, can compare with God's power to love us and help us. So if God is for us, who can be against us? What can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, that's how much he loves us, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things, the strength that we need, the hope that we need, the endurance that we need? Who, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. No matter what we face, we're going to conquer it. No matter what we face, because God is with us, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing in all of creation can separate us from God's love. No matter what you're going through, what your loved ones are going through, nothing can separate you from God's love. It isn't that you don't have more than you can handle sometimes. It's that God is always with you. And nothing is beyond God's ability to handle it. So, you see, it isn't that we don't have more that we feel we can handle sometimes. We do. We do have more than we can handle on our own. What the Bible does promises us 
is that God is with us when we need God most. It reminds me of the old poem, Footprints. Remember that poem? There's two sets of footprints in the sand, but when life is hardest, there's only one because that's when God carries us, when we need God most. There are many things I love about being a pastor. I enjoy preaching. I enjoy preaching and trying to help people when they're having hard times, trying to be there for them. Weddings, great joys. Baptism, great joy. You know, the absolute hardest thing about being a pastor, it's not even close, is when you do funerals for children or teenagers or young people who have just begun their life and it's already over. Nothing is harder than trying to bring comfort or somehow give strength when they've lost someone so young. You all know how my kids are. Elizabeth's 17, they're getting older now, but they've barely begun their lives. It would be absolutely more than I could handle if I were to lose one of my kids in a car accident or something like that. No way could I possibly handle it. It'd be more than I could handle. If Janelle were to contract a serious disease threatening her life and it would take her life, it would be more than I could handle on my own. Of course it would. It would break me down and crush me to have something like that happen in my life. So you see, I never tell people God never gives them more than they can handle on their own. Instead, I tell them they don't have to go through things alone, that God is with them and that God is especially with them in the form of people who love them and care for them. And will help them, help guide them, or give them strength, or give them what they need. That is so important to remember. Tell kids from the time that they're little to understand they're never alone. God is in their hearts. God is with them. And God surrounds them with people who love them and give them strength. We are meant to be there for each other. Earlier we sang the hymn, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Words that remind us of that. From the ground, it just sang the song, Brother, reminding us that we're called to be there for each other. These are songs based on an idea we see again and again in Scripture that I try to show the kids in the children's sermon this morning. It's based on a verse that Brandon and Jacob are going to put up for you this morning. It's Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Carry each other's burdens. Help each other when you need help. And you fulfill the law of Christ. What does that mean? What is the law of Christ? What law? To love God and to love your neighbor as you love yourself. To love each other. It's the greatest commandment, the greatest law we have to follow. If I were to lose Janelle or if I were to lose one of my kids or somehow multiple ones in a car accident, I've had to do funerals like that before too, my Lord, it would be more than I could handle. Of course it would. I could never handle it alone. No one is that strong. So I never tell people, you can do this all by yourself. Never say that. You're strong enough to face it alone. Instead, I say, no, friend, you don't have to handle this alone. God is within you. God is with you. So am I and many others. What can I do for you or get others to do to help you besides pray? Now, don't underestimate the power of praying for someone and letting them know that you are praying. There's power in prayer. But many people in this congregation have heard me say to them at one time or another these words, is there anything I can do for you besides pray? Of course, I'm a pastor I'm going to pray, but can I do anything or get others to help you in some way? So you see, I simply don't agree with a piece of advice that I hear people give each other often, that God doesn't give them more than they can handle. Instead of telling people that, I tell them when it feels like more than you can handle, don't be afraid to ask for help. Because the temptation for many people is to withdraw from others or isolate themselves and try to be strong and face their difficulties alone or carry those burdens alone. When what we really need is to be surrounded by the love and strength of God 
and others. That's part of the reason why there is a church, why we are a family, why we share joys concerned with one another, to pray for each other and love each other and support each other and spread God's love and help people outside this family when, they, when we leave this place so that they might know the love of God also. See, the irony is, and the truth is, we aren't strong when we try to face things alone. We weren't created to go through life this way. The world tries to tell us to be strong that way. But God tells us we're spiritually strong when we know that we need other people. When we can be weak, he is strong. They are weak, but he is strong. You ever heard those words before, you know? God gives you the strength you need. You have heard those words before. They are weak, but he is strong. Those words are so important. It's one of the first songs and truths we teach our kids from the time that they're little. So they'll remember it throughout their lives. But sometimes when we get older, we forget things we've known are true our whole lives. When we face those problems or trials, it isn't true that God never gives you more than you can handle or that life never gives you more than you can handle. It is true that you will never face more than God can handle, that God will see you through those times and that God gives you people in your life to love you and help you so you don't have to face it alone. When we are weak, he is strong. Friends, we're going to end this time together by singing a hymn that you've sung since you were little, a hymn that reminds us of those words, when we are weak, he is strong. It is, of course, Jesus loves me. Please stand if you're able and join together in singing, Jesus loves me. give you a quick example. A couple of days ago, I got a phone call from a member of our congregation, and uh, she had an insulin pump for some time that she knew how to use, got a new insulin pump, can't use it correctly, is having difficulties with it, and asked me to ask if anyone in the congregation knows about insulin pumps or could point her in the right direction or where she could get help with her insulin pump. If you know something like that, if you talk to me afterwards, I can introduce you to her or point me in the right direction and I could help her just an idea that someone needs help, and is there anybody that can help her? And that's what I'm saying happens all the time. People need help, and we can help each other. And when you need help, you are not weak by asking for help. You're strong. It takes strength to ask for help. 
The world tells you to be strong, to face everything alone. God never does. All that God says again and again, nothing can separate you from my love. Jesus loves me, this I know. Known it from the time I was a little kid. Every night when my kids were little and they went to sleep, that's the last thing we did, is sang them that song. Jesus loves me, this I know. When you are weak, he is strong. Know it from the time you're little. Know it in your heart. Grow up and know it in your lives and live your lives that way and give strength to others and love to others and help others because God loves you. When you need help, ask for it and help others when they need help. We're strong together. We're strong in God's love. As you leave this place and live this way with your lives, may the blessings of God the Father Almighty, Jesus Christ, His Son, our Lord and Savior, and the peace and unity of the Holy Spirit be with you now, remain with you forevermore. Amen. Jesus loves me, this I know.